Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video and we're doing another comparison today, this time between Leica's newest 50mm 1.4 Sumalux with the close focus and the older, I guess you can say older now, previous generation Leica 50mm f1.4 Sumalux, which I have right here in front of me. Today, I really wanna answer the question, if you own the previous Sumalux, which I know a lot of people do, this is a legendary lens by Leica, and to be honest, up to this point, my favorite 50 millimeter lens that Leica has made, but should you upgrade to the new one? What are the differences? Is there a difference in image quality? Well, I wanna answer all those questions today. As always, guys, I will be providing image samples for you to download and play with yourself. So not only can you see it here in the video, you can download the images and come up with your own conclusion. With that said, let's go ahead and kick off this video. With the new 50 millimeter, Leica announced three key changes. They went from nine aperture blades to 11, supposedly giving you rounder bokeh like at f2, 2.8, 5.6. They added the new close focus feature that's been added to some of their latest lenses, which means with the previous lens, the minimum focusing distance was 0.7 meters. And usually that limitation has been there because the range finder on a Leica can only focus down to 0.7 meters. But with Leica's newest lenses, they're adding a new close focusing feature, which means this new 50 can go down to 0.45 meters. So about half the distance. Now you won't be able to do that with the range finder, but if you have an EVF or on live view with the back of your camera, you can do it. If you're shooting with the SL2 or SL2S, it's also a great addition, but having that flexibility and that close focus is a big, big difference. And I'll talk about that again later in the video. And then the last thing they mentioned with this lens is it is improved for high resolution. What does that mean? I really kind of scoured the internet, looked at everything like it released, they did mention that the optical formula is identical to the old Lux, so if they didn't change the optical formula, how is this new lens optimized for high resolution sensors? I think I figured it out. I'll talk about it when I'm comparing images, but for now, um, that's what Leica mentions as the key differences between the new Lux and the old Lux. Now, as far as physical dimensions, the new Lux is a little bit bigger everywhere. It's chunkier, a little bit taller, and a little bit heavier. In front of me, I have the previous generation Lux in the silver version, which means this lens is made out of brass. This one is still heavier than the new Lux because it is an all brass construction. With the new Lux, both the silver and the black are made out of anodized aluminum, so they both carry the same weight. So Leica does not make a brass version anymore of the 50 Lux. To be honest, I think that's a good thing. As much as I like the way the silver looks on the old Lux and I enjoy this lens, the silver version was always a bit of a pain to use because it is noticeably heavier. And when using a rangefinder camera, it makes it front heavy. And again, over time, it just makes it a little bit uncomfortable versus the aluminum version, which is lighter and just easier to carry every day. So with the new lens being a little bit chunkier and taller, it also has a new design. It actually looks almost identical to the new 35 Lux. So the 35 and the 50 now have kind of a chunkier, rounder look, almost looks more modern. And overall, I'm digging it. I don't think it is a drastic departure and overall still looks pretty good and feels great in the hand. It is heavier, but still for a 1.4 lens of this image quality, it's incredible. So uh, new design, new features, but what are the differences and should you upgrade? So let me go ahead and bust out my laptop. I took images using three different cameras. So let me kind of explain my logic before I do that. So I have an M11 monochrome. I have a Leica SL2S, and then I have a Sony a7R5. With comparisons, I usually like doing portrait sessions, I like using a model, I like shooting them in different situations, different lighting. I found when I was doing this comparison, I could not do that because these are all manual lenses, and I really wanted to be technical with this comparison to see the key differences. And having the variability of me missing focus with a model or a moving subject would kind of make this test invalid. So the images I took are gonna be very, very boring, but I was trying to get 
kind of sort of scientific with it and make sure that the focusing was not a determining factor on any of these comparisons. With that said, I used three different cameras. I used my M11 monochrome to shoot at 61 megapixels and test what the optimized for high resolution means. I also used my Sony a7R5 because it's a color sensor and I wanted to see the differences with a color sensor, also high resolution. And then I used my Leica SL2S, one of my favorite mirrorless cameras. It makes focusing so freaking easy. I don't know what it is about it, but focusing manually with the SL2S is just incredible. So we'll look at those images to compare as well, the differences of these lenses, and then come up with a conclusion. So with that said, let me really bust out the laptop now and let's go ahead and do some pixel peeping. Okay, like I said, all the images I am gonna be showing you are gonna be available for you to download so you can check them out yourself. And all the images we're gonna be showing today have not been edited straight out of camera and all have the same white balance to also make sure if there's any color shift with these lenses. So starting off with the first image, I told y'all this was gonna be boring. We have a beautiful Starbucks cup. On the left-hand side, we have the old Lux. On the right-hand side, we have the new Lux. You'll see the naming convention in the top. So I will keep the new Lux to the right and all these comparisons and the old one to the left. Let's go ahead and get started. This is wide open at F1.4 at 0 0.7 meters. And when you look at the images, they do look identical. Zooming in, they're both identical in sharpness and overall, it's hard to see any differences. The background blur looks the same. And yeah, uh, zooming out again, hard to tell these images apart. They look like they're using the same optical formula for sure. Let's go ahead and look at F2.8 where we're gonna see some key differences. So here at 2.8, you're gonna start noticing some of the differences. With the old Lux, the bokeh is not as round because of the nine aperture blades. And with the new Lux, it is slightly improved with the 11 aperture blades. So if I zoom in, you're gonna see that the new Lux does have rounder bokeh, but it's not like night and day different. Again, looking at this comparison, is it rounder? Yes. Does it improve it? Yes. Is it night and day? I need to buy it right now. I personally don't think so. Uh, at least not at 2.8. Looking down the middle, again, both are just as sharp. So let's go ahead and look at 2.8 and see if the difference is larger. So here at 2.8, you're gonna notice a little bit of the same. If you zoom into the bokeh, you're gonna see that on the old Lux, you start seeing the edges of the aperture blades. And on the new Lux, it does continue to look rounder. Again, not the biggest, most drastic difference. It is improved and it is rounder. Sharpness though and image quality definitely remain the same. I did mention these were shot at 0 0.7 meters. So let's actually compare close focusing with the new Lux and the old one. So let's take a look at those images. So here on the left, the old Lux is at 0 0.7 meters. And on the right, we have the new Lux at 0 0.45 meters. And you can see the difference is drastic. Zooming in at 0 0.45 meters, the new Lux is still incredibly sharp, wide open. And you see how it just blows out the background. This is a great thing about being able to focus closer. At being at 1.4 lens, you can just obliterate the background and just have way more bokeh. And this is a really cool addition to the lens. And I've used it in portraits and some of the results are just incredible. Just being able to get a little bit closer. I will say, focusing at 0 0.45 meters, it is hard. So focusing at 1.4 is already hard at 0 0.7 meters. Getting even closer, you're I mean, your depth of field is so razor thin that <laughs> on a rangefinder, um, even with live view, it's definitely difficult. I think the SL2S here made it easier, but even with a live view screen on the M11 monochrome, it is difficult to focus with that razor thin of depth of field. But here you can see the differences. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the same pictures, but with the M11 monochrome to see if we see any differences with the high resolution sensor. So here we have the M11 monochrome, as you can see, old one on the left, new one on the right. Image quality looks identical. Zooming in, I did slightly miss focus on the new Lux here with the M11 monochrome, but the sharpness on the in-focus areas are identical. 
So based on these images, it's hard to say there's a difference uh, and hard to say on what improved quality for high resolution sensors is. If I go to the 2.8 version, let's just kind of check out those images so we can eliminate any of the focusing problems. And here at 2.8 on the M11 monochrome, zooming in, you're gonna see, again, in the sharp areas, they are identical. And the image really looks the same. And the M11 monochrome is really pushing the 61 megapixel sensor because you have more detail out of it. And on these two images, it's hard to see a difference. But we're looking at a Starbucks cup. I did more tests, so let's take a look at the additional test and come up with one of my theories on what Leica means with this improved high resolution uh, image quality. So on this next test, I had a buddy of mine who actually picked up the new Lux and sold it within 24 hours. His reasoning was he liked the way the flares looked on the older Lux and he liked that red ring. So if you're not familiar with the previous generation uh, Sumo Lux, the lens flares can get a little crazy. And when the sun hits the lens just right, you do get a red ring uh, flare that looks pretty cool in images. So when he mentioned that, automatically I thought, oh, okay, so if the new one doesn't do that, but it shares the same optical formula, what could be different? So I tested it. Here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see I have the old Lux, and on the right-hand side, I have the new one, both wide open. This is actually shot with SL2S. And on a tripod, which is important here because you can see on the old Lux, you have that red ring of flare. And on the new Lux, you still have a ring of flare, less pronounced and more rainbow color. And another thing to point out, if you look at the left-hand side, I'll zoom in here, the actual flare is close to identical because the optical formula is identical, which means that this red ring is less pronounced on the new one I'm guessing because of improved coatings on the lenses. I personally think, and my theory is, Leica improved the coatings or added coatings to the same optical formula, and by adding coatings to the lenses, we're able to squeeze out either A, more detail on higher resolution sensors, or better performance out of the same optical formula with higher resolution sensors. And by doing that, you also eliminate some of the imperfections, like this red ring, uh, that the old Lux produced. Furthermore, I think I can validate this with my other test, and let me go ahead and show it to you. So in this test, I took both lenses out, again, on a tripod to Disney World, and took a picture here of this topiary. And when I zoomed in, both lenses looked identical, and again, I didn't really see any differences. Then I started moving to the edges, and I realized that the, the new Lux is actually sharper in the corners and not by a little, but actually by a significant amount. Here you can see the old version um, does look almost like it has like a blur Vaseline on it versus the right-hand version is just crisper and more contrasty. So let's take a look at another image. In another image here, you're gonna see that zooming in the middle, again, both are perfect, both are sharp. Zooming into the edge, again, the new Lux is sharper in the corners and squeezing out more detail. So I personally think that what Leica did is add improved coatings to the lenses and that helped improve image quality in the corners. And I'm assuming that's where they're getting the improved image quality for high resolution sensors. I also took the flare pictures with the M11 monochrome to see the, the differences. And when you're shooting in monochrome, obviously you get no red rings. So here you're gonna see just to show you, on the left-hand side, we have the old Lux, on the right-hand side, we have the new Lux, and you're gonna see that the actual flare doesn't really even show up too much when you zoom in because you're shooting in monochrome. It is still less pronounced with the new Lux, but not as much on the M11 monochrome. You can see here, it's a little bit more defined on the old one. It's kind of hard when you zoom in. Let me see right here. It's more defined here on the old one than it is on the new one which again, I think validates my theory. But anyways, I will be including all these images for you to download and pixel peep yourself, including the Sony ones, which I didn't really cover because again, it's a little bit of the same thing. Let me go ahead and shut down my laptop and let's go ahead and do our final thoughts on these two incredible lenses. Okay, so what did y'all think? Personally, I think all these improvements are 
incremental improvements and Leica didn't really redesign or reinvent the wheel here. Do I think that's a bad thing or do I mind that? Personally, I don't. The Leica 50 Summa Lux is one of the best 50 millimeter lenses I've ever used. And like I mentioned before, I've always owned a version of this lens when I own a Leica body. So with a new lens, you're getting closer focusing, which really changes the ability to take certain images and portraits really completely gives you a different look getting closer at 1.4. You are getting rounder bokeh shot at 2.8, 2.0, 5.6, and you are getting slightly improved image quality in the corners, and I think slightly improved flare resistance with potentially new coatings. So all in all, very welcomed improvements. So the question I really set out to answer should you upgrade immediately from your old Lux to the new Lux if you own the old version? I personally think no. Unless you're dying to have close focusing and you have a need for that, this upgrade is incremental and your old Lux can still produce incredible images and will continue to produce incredible images for years to come. Now, if you're in the market for a new Lux, this also makes it tough because you can pick up an older one now even cheaper on the used market because people are trying to offload them to pick up the new one. But then again, if I was in the market for a new lens and I had the budget, I would go for the new Lux. It gives you the little extra features that make a great lens an even better lens and it's kind of hard to say anything negative about this new Leica 50mm Summa Lux spherical. As always, guys, hopefully you enjoy this comparison. After reviewing the photos, download the samples yourself. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, please like the video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys. Peace.